Uh, welcome to another episode of the Frugal Athlete Podcast. Today we got Will Blackman, aka the NFL Wine Guy, aka Wine Connoisseur. Um, how you doing today? A lot of a lot of AKAs, man. I, I wear I wear a lot of hats <laughs> lately, man. But uh, I'm good, man. Um, family's good. Um, business is 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 fun. Uh, there's a lot lots of learning, and then um, obviously we you know monumental thing happened today you know obviously on the news you know that was a big deal so you know a lot of it's a lot going on <laughs> yes exactly and, and at the time of this recording um the murder of george floyd was you know found guilty on all charges so it's a uh, one step forward in terms of justice so i appreciate you highlighting that um but back to you from the standpoint of you know all the wonderful things that you go you got going on and i know we're going to get into it uh, give us some background. Obviously, you've played yeah. uh, you played in the NFL for 12 years. If you look at your background, a lot of game balls. Um, a lot of footballs back then. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of game balls. So that just speaks to your talent, you know. Yeah, you, of, you know what, though? But go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut no, you no, you're good. I'm just saying not a lot of people can say they've played 12 years in the league, you know. So that's just a testament to your talent. Yeah, no, it's one, it's, it's amazing to just to make it there alone. You mm -hmm. know, that's number one. Not many people can say they got there alone. Um and yet to play 12 years, man, it was literally, it was survival mode. You know, it's, you, you get, you get in the NFL and it's fun the first two years. Then it's like, okay, they want immediate results. And then you start dealing with all kinds of adversity. And then you start learning the, you start learning the business side of it. Like, okay, how do I survive? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how nice a person you are, you know, how good of a player you are. It's, it's, it's a beauty contest, you know, this personal preference. Like, do you, are you what's best for the organization right now? You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah so I, I've seen everything. I was in, I mean, I got drafted, which was a high, you know. I was talking to a buddy the other day about the the mental shifts of emotion with just, I'm, from my experience as an NFL athlete, it's, you know, you get drafted, you're on a super high, you know, and then you get injured and you're on a super low, and then, you know, 2009, I ended up tearing everything in my knee, pretty mm -hmm. much. And I remember I signed a, like a one-year deal, which was enough to take care of our family for a long time and my, never got healthy. So then 2010, I ended up getting released from the team. Ended up didn't, I didn't end up getting anything that I signed. My wife is seven months pregnant. <laughs> it's like, we got to move from Green Bay back to California. Like there's just so, it was so much just any reason to go in the dark. And then the next year I go to the Giants and I win the Super Bowl. Like it was just. <laughs> uh, it's just like the, the, the roller coaster of an athlete life. People don't see that, you know, they only see the glitz and glamor, and, you know, for you to talk about that. Obviously we have the NFL draft coming up. If there's like one piece of advice, you know, from a career standpoint, you know, you talked about, you know, the first two years, you're kind of on a high, then you realize, you know, there's a business side to it. What would be your piece of advice? Um, I, I think the best thing for me is just uh, education and information, you know, especially when, when, it, when it's during the season, like, yes, it's all football. Like you're all mm -hmm. in, it's all football. you be the best football player possible during those, whatever, five, six months. But then as soon as the season's over, it's like, okay, like get information, educate yourself on all facets of life, you know, um, if you have a financial advisor, like learn financial literacy, like get to know those things and um, learn, learn about investments. You may not invest in anything, learn about that. If you have an aspiring thing where you want to get into some kind of business of your own to start your own business, well, learn about it while you have the capital because not everyone's going to have that kind of capital when they leave. So, and I'm speaking from experience because I was, I was football 24 seven. I didn't care about it, nothing else. <laughs> so when, when was, was that awful. aha moment for you then? When was that like switching? <laughs> when, I, when I was almost done playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, oh, what am I going to do next? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, shoot. like, man, you know, so I'm, I'm literally learning. I'm learning stuff right now. And I wish I took full advantage then. I mean, I'm happy with what, what's going on now, but I wish I took full advantage then because it would have been way less time consuming for me right now because I'm, doing this i'm starting this business i'm in class here i'm in this certification class i'm in this school you know i wish i'd done all that a long time ago 
So, yeah, let's talk about that. Obviously, you had a splendid career. You know, Green Bay, you won a Super Bowl with the Giants, Jacksonville, Redskins. You played for some hi historic organizations. Um, but obviously, great branding. You have the I Wine MVP. Uh, sorry, the Wine MVP hat. Um, when did this all come about? Like, were you always into wine? First of all, yeah, red I, or white? I like them all. Okay. Yeah, no, I like them. <laughs> I'm not... When you when you start studying and evaluating wine, it's like you like you love them all. You know, it's you know I I grew up loving. I was a diehard, passionate football fan. I have my I played defensive back. Was that my favorite position? No, it, was, it probably was. But I, but I have my favorite player was a running back. I love a bunch of offensive linemen. I love a bunch of quarterbacks. I just love football. You know, that's how there's a wine. I love. I just love wine in itself. And I, I think for me, it started when. Um, in terms of the business aspect, like I want to stop our own label, you yeah. know, like, like most people, most athletes or celebrities, they just, they start their own label. And I started doing research and everyone I spoke to was like, you can have the best grapes, winemaker, whatever it is, at the end of the day, you got to move product, period, you know? Yeah. And I was like, gosh, that seems like, you know, I thought it was interesting, like, that it seemed like a huge challenge. And so while I was doing my research and seeing what people were buying and looking at the market and reading all these reports, I'm like, you know what? Like I have such a unique network of people. Like, why don't I just be the middleman? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> why not? Why not? How come I can't just be the shoe plug, right? Like the wine plug, like, like that. Yeah. And that's when the concierge came about. Um, you know, I got access to some retailers where I can have wine without inventory. And I just started calling my friends and I was like, look, I know you're into wine. I have the ability to stock sellers, to manage sellers and what have you. So I, out the gate, I just started calling friends who I knew had, who liked wine and it happened to be word of mouth. And then I was thinking, well, I'm really big on like education and teaching people about wine without, without wine being intimidating and talking over their heads. Yeah. But the, that same group of people are not going to spend that kind of money like Matt Ryan will or Reggie Bush will on wine. So that's when I ended up creating a wine club um, where it was, you know, reasonable 80 bucks, two bottles from two historic wineries um, it included as education, information and stuff like that. So that's when I started doing that. And then I kept building my ladder up and now I'm more, I do virtual tasting. I started, I'm now I'm kind of in the hospitality space with events, tourism, concierge, all that. So, so it's a full on umbrella of services that people need. That's, that's amazing. So was it uh, like, who helped you get into the space? Cause obviously, you know, being an African American, you know, we had that movie on Netflix that came out and it talked about, you know, uh, I think you were a consultant or got interviewed in relation to that, I'm not sure, but. You mean on court, that one? Yeah, on yeah, court. Yeah. So when it comes to um, getting into the space, how was it for you? Um, you know what, it was, it was interesting because, I mean, the fact that I play football and like wine, it was mm -hmm. kind of like, it was interesting, you know? So even though people will say, well, you know, you dealt with it differently, because you played in the NFL. So people kind of gave you a pass to get in until you gave a reason to kick you out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, that's, I said, that's fair. You could say that, but that doesn't mean like I put the work in to be in that position. That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I put my, I put the work in to one, be an NFL player and then to play long enough to win a Super Bowl to reap those benefits from after. Words, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I think what really, I think what really helped and expedited the process, though, was people found out how serious I was in terms of respecting the history, the viticulture, the art, you know, of wine. Versus, I'm just here sipping the most expensive stuff and just posting it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm here, like really trying to educate myself about the wine world, and, and I think that's what that's what the I guess the real wine folks respected. No, that's important. I think, you know, for any athlete listening, you know, you touched on two things, you know, 
obviously using your relationships that you already have, you know, being an NFL player, you know, for some historic teams in strategic locations, um, you're able to tap into your network to build a wine club and to build a concierge service. But at the same time, you use the skills that you had from your athletic career, the hard work, the discipline, the, you know, getting in the weeds to make sure that in this new space that you treated it, you know, like a game, like it was your new championship. Right. And the so, biggest thing for me is, the, the one thing that I did that I did very, very well that I can probably pat myself on the back on this. I didn't, in my 12 years in NFL, I burned zero bridges, zero bridges. And That's me, important. yeah. So if a team cut me, like, because they probably thought something was better, I most likely disagreed, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a personal thing. It was mm -hmm. like, you know, they made a business decision. It is what it is. You know, even even people I competed against, you know, we competed against. It, it was it's never a personal situation. So I can call anyone and whoever and they're like, yeah, dude, like now, shoot, like guys who used to be my general managers or my coaches are becoming my clients. <laughs> you know amazing. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They, they trust me and they knew what type of person I was when I played for them. And so it's 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 funny how the world works like that now. No, as, and that's really important, you know, never burn any bridges because you never know when you might have to turn around. Um, no. But with that being said, obviously, you started a business. Did you know anything from the standpoint of, you know, being an entrepreneur or is it kind of like, you know, you just you kind of learn as you go? Yeah, I knew absolutely nothing in terms of like legal and logistics stuff. Uh -huh. it's, everything looks great when you're doing marketing and getting started and everyone's on the high and it feels, and it's cool and it's fun, but it's like at the same time, like you gotta, you gotta protect yourself, man. And you gotta really understand what it, what it really is to be an entrepreneur. And then also too, you get into taxes and IRS and those kind of things, right? You know, yeah. if you start a business, you open a business account. Well, you better have money in that business account because <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. once you, if you're spending it and you're not putting it back in, then you're going to get taxed on whatever, you know, whatever is in there. So I'm learning all of that stuff as we go, even comes down to like, okay, like trademarks and uh, copyrights and just so many things. And even in the wine business, there's all kinds of licenses you have to, you need a license in certain states. Some states you can't even sell wine into those states. You know, there's just so really? many there's so many detailed things that um, comes along with taking on being an entrepreneur, you know? And so those are the things where I was like, I had, again, I wish I took advantage and, and learned those stuff early on um, for just, just for the bandwidth aspects. Yeah. You know, I'm learning and I'm, I'm fine now. I'm cool. I'm still learning as I go. I just, I just finished the, um, I took the wine business management course at Sonoma state and, and it took me two years. I just completed it. Just got my certificate the other day. For well, congratulations it. on that. Thank you. Yeah, and I did that for that reason. You mm -hmm. know, there's even stuff about like, you know, all the e-commerce and integrations and CRMs and all, like all those like little back end detail stuff that the public eye has no idea about. Um, yeah. I wanted to know those things versus versus me just I'm um, you know the head honcho and I just hire a bunch of people to do it for me. Like no no like I I like being you know in the yard mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I think that's really important, especially now that you see a lot more athlete entrepreneurs getting into the space. Um, and you touched on it earlier, you know, a lot of athletes, you know, have their own wines, um, whether it's private label or they, you know, doing it on their own, like own production. Talk about the different ways you can get into the wine business. Obviously, you've built a whole hospitality business around it. And I know you have other entities within the wine space. Um, but talk about it from like specific athlete perspective. How can someone get involved? Yeah, I mean, there's, you have, you have the rare case, like, let's say Drew Bledsoe, right? Yeah. Um, People sleep on Drew Bledsoe. You got a whole, like, wine, wine farm and everything. No, he has, he has a whole vineyard. He has a whole vineyard. Oh, yeah, wow. Done. He has a whole vineyard in Walla Walla, Washington. Yeah, he has a whole vineyard. He lives there. He's actually from Walla Walla, Washington. And he's, like, elite, you know. And then you have... Dwayne Wade, uh, Wade Sellers, uh, D Wade Sellers, and he actually—it's funny because when he first made his wine, it was at a price point he was not happy with because, like, and I think Charles Woodson was in the same situation too. It's like, yeah, the wine is great, it's, it's expensive, but people are buying the bottle and holding on to it. You know, you want people to keep buying more and more and more. So yeah. he was like, I need to 
I need to drop those prices so people can, first of all, so people he knows, you know, in his communities can actually afford the wine and, you know, and then you want people to come back and buy more. So I think D. Ray did a, a great job. He partnered with Jason Palmeyer, who's like a legendary war renowned winemaker. And, you know, he makes a wine. I think his rose, his rose, I think is like 20 bucks. And it's like, it's insane. He has a cab for like 30 bucks, which is insane. And same thing, Charles Woodson, his wines, each one, the, all four of his varietals are 20 bucks, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, or, or you can, well, you can, like you said, you can do the private label thing. A lot of people are just partnering with, you know, a fulfillment house and a custom crush place and they do everything for you and you just slap your name on it. You can do it like that or, I don't know, maybe you want to work in a restaurant. I don't know. There's there's just so many different ways to to get into this space. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's it's cool, you know, and, and I, love, I love seeing it. Uh, CJ McCollum's another one. I'm sure Josh Hart is working on one. He's not telling anybody. So <laughs> a lot going on. So like, how, how does it feel, obviously, to be like a subject matter expert in a new space? You know, I feel like when, everything, when anything comes between sports and wine, you're the guy. You know, you've done stuff with Uninterrupted. You've been on, you know, different magazines, different things like that. So how do you handle um, the media aspect of your business? Um, I handle it in terms of, you know, I, my message is still learning, still growing. Like when people want to say, oh, he's an expert, he's this and that. I was like, I never claimed that, never said that. <laughs> you know, people, are, people are highlighting what I'm doing because of how, they're respecting how serious I am about it. Mm -hmm. You know, like he went and he went and took the quarter masters level one. He took W set two. He took W set three. He went to Sonoma state. You know, I'm studying right now for another exam. Like he's out here in the streets, like getting it done. You know, yeah. like you mentioned earlier, he's lifting all the weights. He's in the film room. Like I'm doing all these things. And so every relationship that I form is legit genuine. It's like, how can we help the wine space together? I, I always, I always let people know that I'm not here. I'm here with no ego, none. Yeah. You guys know I play football. Like I'm not going to come in walk to the space, my chest puffed out and be like, Hey, you know, I, that's not, that's not what I'm about, man. I'm a, I did at the end of the day, first and foremost, you know, I'm a servant leader, man, that's how I roll. Um, so I think, Anytime I get a chance to do something like that, that's that's the message I share. It's I have it's funny you say that. I have about I got four talks coming up in the next four weeks. Um where I'm a moderator for two. One of them I'm actually doing like a, I'm a guest, I'm a main speaker at this wine summit. And then there's Amazing, another man. one. He has another one I'm a oh I'm speaking at our uh, uh, our legends uh, yeah legends event right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm speaking that thing, that thing too so so yeah man it's uh it's it's cool it's cool people want to it's more so they want to hear the story you know because i never again i never claim to know it all and i know how people are and stuff like that but i know a lot but i don't know it all and and i i love to show that vulnerability because people respect that no, that's what it's all about. And, you know, that's why, you know, a lot of people are able to connect with you because you're so open and honest. And it's not like, you know, I'm the only one that's allowed to get into this wine space. It's like, this is how I did it. This is the stuff. This is the route I took. Um, if you guys are interested, tap in with me. And I Yeah, I got a lot of players that are trying to get into this space. And they're, they say, hey, Will, can you check my wine out for me? What do you think? You know, or, hey, how, who can you connect with? The one thing that I have, I got resources, bro. Like, I can, uh, what, you, what you need. Like, I'll, I'll. I'll I'm teaching how to fish in a heartbeat. The way the way you talked about the private label, I'm like, hey, Will, can we set up another call? Because that seems like a viable option. I want to get into that. I yeah, mean, that's it. I mean, all you do is find somebody who's making wine that you like, and you're like, hey, man, stop my little on that. They're like, I got you. Okay, that's cool. That's that's really cool. <laughs> I didn't know it was like that easy. I thought you like, if you had to like, you might get in trouble depending on where you sell it, if it's online. So just trying to figure that out. That's, that's yeah. Really cool. Um, last, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I want to talk. Sure, about you're good. I am. He I am here. If anything, what time is it? I got to make dinner in like half an hour. So you're good. All right. Perfect. Um, uh, but I just wanted to ask you, you know, from, from the young athlete's perspective, you know, you played 12 years. That's, um, that's a testament to your, you know, your ability, but the average is three to four. Um, you know, people might say that, well, it's easy for Will to get into the wine business because he had kind of like a cushion, 
Um, so what would you say to that and how can athletes, whether it's them in the niche sports or ones that didn't play as long as you did to kind of transition to the next thing that they want to do? Well, I would say whatever, whatever it is that you're interested in, I would just, I would just continue to learn about it and really see if that's something that you would want to get into that space. Yeah. You know? um, like I guess I read a lot of magazines. I saw a lot of movies. I saw things and it hit me. When I saw Psalm, the, the Somalia movie, where the guys were trained to be master Psalms, I thought that was beyond cool. And mm -hmm. it, it struck a chord in me like, damn, dude, I want to learn how to like even just evaluate one like that a little bit. You know what I mean? What's harder, being a Psalm or learning like a new playbook for a new team? Well, that's, that's I mean, being a Psalm because I've, I've played football my whole life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am an expert in football, okay? Because uh -huh. I, I know the, the basic foundation of football. It's almost like once you, in wine, once you understand the basis of geography, Okay. And soil and climate. If you know geography, soil and climate, that is like 70 to 80 percent of it. You know what okay. I mean? So would you say you travel more for wine or for, you know, football or like the luxuries of football? Oh, for football, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I only been in this for about almost three years and, you know, we were going to travel last year and obviously we couldn't, you know, yeah. for obvious reasons. But um, I traveled more virtually. I did that a lot. So. Yeah. But yeah, I just tell young guys, like, whatever it is that you want to get into, if you're interested in, like, and I actually spoke to a couple of uh, player development uh, people in the NFL. I'm like, look, like, you can, you, they keep bringing in, you know, I guess people in fields that most players probably can't relate to, you know, like, yeah. Maybe maybe a bunch of guys in the team, let's say, are driving, you know, a Mercedes, you know, we'll bring in an executive at Mercedes and see how he got to where he was or see how they run or maybe bring in, you know, bring in an executive at Gucci or bring in an executive because people bring in former plays that probably we never heard of. And, you know, yeah. It's like, well, yeah, of course, he's going to tell us stuff. A lot of guys don't want to listen. But if you want to get someone's attention, bring somebody in a field where, you know, where it's like, damn, this is how I did it. A lot of athletes end up trying to go into music, bring in a, bring in a music producer or, you know, somebody who, but who's doing it at a, at, a, at an awesome level, you yeah. know, at a, at a, at a known record label. So I think there's ways to like grab their attention um, so that they can start thinking about it now. Like I said, after the season, you got plenty of time to focus on that because you just got to work out after the season, you know? No, so obviously it's a different time than when you were in the league um did you take advantage i know you said you talked about towards the end of your career you were doing more things to actively prepare but from the you know nfl pa and all the player development programs was that something that you like looked into or is it now you're on the back end um you, you're going back and reaching back yeah no the good the cool thing is um i do get emails about the trust and the nfl pa and all these player engagement uh uh you know activities and events so yeah, towards the, towards the end, I, I started just signing up for them and, and taking the time to do my due diligence and, and do that. And that's how, I mean, the NFL paid for my school. I took advantage of those programs. Um, I took advantage of, like, Barcast Boot Camp. All these things that they have um, that I thought I could use, I did use them, and it, and it helped me a ton. So, yeah, I definitely took full advantage of those things. Oh, that's amazing. Um, last question. I, I know I said it last question like five minutes ago, but so – I, listen, I am, I am here I for you, Doug, okay? <laughs> you are not wasting my time. You, you, had a, you had a wonderful quote, and I wrote it down beforehand uh, when it came to money. Make sure your dollars are facing the same way before you put it in your wallet. <laughs> Explain that. I was like, wait, hold up. Let me write this down because uh, I got to make sure I ask them. What, what, what was your meaning behind that? So this is a long time ago when my wife and I were first together. Mm -hmm. and my wife Shauna and so it's funny because I was like what quote am I going to say and I told yeah. her this so and I might put my money in my water she's like what are you doing I was like I'm just putting my wallet she's no 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 she, you, need, you need to have these bills face the same way because that, that means you value the money that means you take care of it have them all facing the same way like you respect it because if you don't if you disrespect the money you're going to lose it <laughs> okay I like that 
Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So she, so from then, I was like, this is like probably 12, 13 years ago. So I just made sure all my bills face the same way because it just shows like you value it. You know, it was yeah. like, energy. it was an energy thing. No, uh, yeah, that's okay. It makes sense now. I was like, I was looking at, I was like trying to read. I was looking it up. I was like, there has to be like an analogy behind this. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, put like if, if you treat your money with care, if you put value on your money, um, then it will return the favor tenfold. Yeah. Um, very good. very very uh, plain and simple. Yeah. So, <laughs> I know you were going crazy. <laughs> I was I was tripping, bro. Uh, so for anyone that might want to connect with you, uh, where can they find you? I know you, you're busy. I know you got some yeah. cool projects lined up. Where, uh, where can they tap in? Yeah, I mean the best place is is just at Will Blackman on Twitter and Instagram. I'm very engaging and and active there. So those are the best two uh, to connect with me there. Okay, perfect. And yep. are you allowed to speak? I know last time on the Legends Network, um, and for context, uh, me and Will are both part of a, uh, an organization that you know brings athletes together to learn more about different investment strategies and different things like that. So that's how we were able to connect as athletes. It's important to you know take advantage of these networks to really grow. Um, but you had mentioned a wonderful opportunity coming your way. I know you got a bunch, but it had to do with uh, something in the film space. Are you yeah, no. To speak on it? No, there, there's there's some stuff still in the works, um, but I do have a couple other things outside of that. Um, fashion Network Live, which is a, um, it's like the number one fashion network in the whole world. They do have all the fashion shows, everything fashion, high fashion is on there. They they create a a, a talk show. And they want me on the panel. It's like me, a couple models, a couple of people in the, in the fashion world and like a drag queen. It's like a bunch of us, like it's a mixed crowd. And, okay. and it's, it's funny because it's like, it's like we can talk political stuff, you know, and I'm, I'm very careful with what I say politically, especially yeah. when I'm around and without getting emotional. High. And then also too, um, has been announced, but I'll say it here anyway. Um, Amazon got NFL rights and they bought Twitch. And, oh. and Twitch is they were looking for an NFL analyst. So they hit me up and offered it. I accepted it. So I'm going to start doing NFL stuff on Twitch. Also, possibly doing boxing stuff on Twitch. Okay. So there's like, there's a lot of things going on. That's what I'm saying. I, wear, I got a lot of hats, man. Yeah. So it's, you know, I remember talking to Nate Bros and he was like, man, he said, once I left the league, he said, I just exhausted myself. I just, <laughs> He did. He, just, he said I did it on purpose. Yeah. There was the op. I just took it. You know, just keep. Say yes. Figure out the rest later. Yeah, because the media, man, it's out of sight, out of mind. And then and obviously, you know, being African American, man, if there's an op, man, take that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Nice. So sorry, I just write this down so I could follow follow up. Um, so that's it. I mean, I appreciate you. Um, coming on, you know, sharing some of the gems that you have. I'm definitely going to tap in with you later about this yeah, uh, this wine thing. I think it's, you're a good testament uh, for athletes that are looking to transition. It's not one size fits all, you know. You yeah. don't have to go into one space. There's plenty of different passions that athletes have, and you know. You I keep in mind. Them. I keep in mind. I'm a Moby. I'm, I'm a rare case. I'm, I'm. I am very, very fortunate that I found what I want to do early. Mm -hmm. because when guys leave it doesn't matter how much money guys made once you leave it's it's like taking the hamster off the wheel it's like what, what do i do now you know exactly when i played football that was my passion so i was i was willing to go through anything to make it work i didn't i didn't want to do something where it felt like a hobby because if it was a hobby once it got difficult and challenging i probably wouldn't want to do it anymore that's you true know? And so I was able to find wine to be that passion where, where when I'm going through days that suck, I'm still willing to like, okay, eventually it's going to be positive, you know? So that's, I'm a rare case. Just wanted to put that out there. This, this is not normal for guys to find what they want to do ASAP. No, and that's, that's why it's so important for, you know, athletes to you spend their off seasons or spend their free time to like explore different passions. So it's, instead of like when they retire, it's like, you know, I don't want to say you're wasting years to try to figure out what you're passionate about, but at least you have, a, you know, an inclination of like, all right, I did an externship in that company. I, I don't really want to do that. Um, or I did something this or I interviewed that guy. And now I know, all right, these are kind of the lanes I want to pursue. 
when I'm done playing. And it's just the, the process is going to be, the transition is going to be hard for everybody. It's going to be difficult, but at least if you can like subsidize it and make it somewhat uh, attainable, I think that's, right. that's really important. And that's what you alluded to. So uh, once again, Will, really appreciate you for taking the time. Um, we're going to have all your information in the show notes. So make sure you guys check out Wine MVP. I'll follow him on the socials. And if you guys are so kind, please leave a review and rate this podcast. It helps us get discovered. It helps us, you know, help support the show. So appreciate y'all once again. And thank you so much.